He's in the co-main event of UFC Noche against Jack Della Madalena. He is Kevin Holland. Before we start on this fight, I want to ask you about this past weekend's event. Sean Strickland beats Israel Adesanya. Now, Sean is a very similar fighter to you in the sense that he takes a lot of short notice fights. He takes fights um, with a lot of regularity. And because he spars so often, I feel like that's something that you do as well. Was it nice to see somebody that has kind of a similar ethos to you win a championship? Yeah, it was nice to see Sean Strickland win for sure, for sure. But it's like uh, me and Strickland don't really get along. So it's like uh, it was like whoever wins in the main event wins in the main event. Shout out to Eric Nixick. He's one hell of a coach. And I think they all did a marvelous job over there. So it's like props to those guys. Mm. You know, forget about getting along. Again, it's kind of the ethos, like taking fights with regularity and then being. No, I don't feel like me and him have any similarities. No, whatsoever. no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, again, the reason I ask is if you keep taking fights and you keep winning fights, like a championship could be kind of around the corner for you it's, with, with it's, the kind of regularity that you're taking fights. It's never something I stress. I just stress fight, 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 fight. Uh, you become a champ, you probably fight less. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, you stay around here, around the 15, around the 10 range. You might not, you know what I mean? But you fight a lot. And, uh, you know, it's like the world's a better place when Kevin fights a lot. You know <laughs> so does mean? that mean that your championship aspirations are just kind of if it happens, it happens, but it's not something that you're, you know, eagerly anticipating. Nah, man, it's like, uh, it's like people want the belt for what notoriety. It's like the fans f with me heavy. You know what I mean? They know who I am. They love me. It's like, uh, so it's like I got notoriety. Uh, people want the belt for something gold and shiny. It's like uh, this is just one of many. You know what I mean? It's like so I got some gold and shiny. So it's like uh, at the end of the day, it's like if the people love me and the people are happy where I am, it's like I'm happy where I am. It's like, I just want to continue to fight and put on a show for the people. I'm an entertainer. You know, it's like I never said I was the, the world champion of the road, but I am the best person to call on when you need somebody to fight somebody. And if I'm not world champion of the road, I can always be that person for the people. You get what I'm saying? So it's like uh, you guys always talk about a title. Like, you need to be in a title. You need to be title. Title, title this, title that, title that. Title's not everything in martial arts is evolved around. You know what I mean? Uh, martial arts is evolved around just going out there and growing. And I grow every time I go out there and fight. If I have a belt, I can fight less. So I'm going to go out there and fight as much as I can and never worry about a title. I'm only going to worry about making enough money to take care of my family and set them up for the future and beating every f person in front of me, just beating their ass. You know what I mean? Whether it's choking them out, breaking their arm, punching them in the face, like whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? It's like I never, ever worry about a title. I had a conversation with my family about it not too long ago. You know what the end of the conversation was? F that sh you know what I mean? It's not something. All of them said that together? Yeah, we all said it. You know, it's like when we thought about the math of it, it's not good. It's not what, it's not, it's not good for my activity level. It's like, I'm a very active person. Being active is what keeps me mentally sane. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I really, really love combat. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, if I didn't fight a month ago and like, I felt like I had to keep going on with this, this question everybody keeps asking me, I'd be a lot more snappy. I'm not as snappy because I just fought a month ago. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel good. I like to fight a lot. Yeah, so when you talk about the math of it all, that was kind of what my next question would be. Is like you'd rather fight four times a year and make like $100,000 more than fighting twice a year and being the champion. Yeah, I just rather like that's your four, preference. I'd rather fight four times a year, period. <laughs> yeah, if I was making $100,000 less, I'd be cool with that too. If I was making $500,000 less, I'd be okay with that. As long as I'm making enough to feed my family, which I do. And as long as I'm fighting three to four times a year, three times is not enough, four times, barely enough. Be honest with you, if I could do five or six if they schedule this right, I'd be good to go. So that's the part of, of this that you're in for. Like the training to you doesn't give you the same kind of, I guess, a dread, you know, gratification as the actual fights themselves. Yeah, you got to test yourself, right? Like, I mean, people spar on Saturdays. So let's just say if I didn't spar on Saturday because I have, what, like, damn near 30 fights underneath my belt now. Like, I got a lot of fights, right? So it's like if I didn't spar on Saturdays anymore, if I just went and fought every six weeks, it'd be the same as getting that sparring in on Saturday and I could just train all the time. Cut weight every once in a while, but at 85, I don't really cut that much weight. So it's like 70, sometimes I got to be super disciplined. 85, sometimes it doesn't. It's like, bro, I just want to fight. And it's <laughs> like, you guys, you know, it's like, I just want to fight. <laughs> How many times could you fight at 170 pounds in a year? Like with, with the weight cuts being taken into account? If, if it was I, up to I, you. If I, take my, if I take my diet serious all year, five times for sure. If I don't take my diet serious all year, three to four times is like definitely the max because it's a weight cut. Uh, 185 pounds, I could fight. I can fight seven to eight times a year, probably more than that. And is that what you prefer? I prefer to fight as much as possible. Yeah, so 185 pounds, are you thinking of just transitioning back to that division full-time and just saying, hey, if anybody ever pulls out, like, just give me a call. I'm around. They always know that. But that being said, I'm Sean Shelby's guy, and then if Mick Maynard ever needs me and Sean says it's okay, I'm in there like swimwear. Until then, 
I'm fighting at 170 pounds, and I plan for four to five fights a year. And you said the UFC wants you to fight at 170 pounds. Why do you think that is? I just think they like the way that I look at 170 pounds. It's like my abs look really good and stuff like that. And then at 85, I look a little flubby. And I think the sexier you are, the more it sells. And I'm sexy as at 170. And at 85, I'm just, nah, you know. So sexy sells. Remember that. It's good to be sexy. And when you get your numbers back from the posters being sold, are the posters of you at 170 pounds? Uh, they don't really never have posters of, like, <laughs> me. But overall, I am pretty sexy at 170 pounds. All right. Well, I'm not here to argue with you. So, uh Jack Della Madalena presents a, a pretty interesting stylistic matchup for you. What do you think of him and, and his rise in the UFC? Uh, I think it's uh, pretty good. You know, I think he's been doing a really good job. I think he had a little bit of a bump on the last fight, and I think he's looking to avenge himself this one. But the thing about the UFC is a lot of times guys don't just lose one fight in a row. They lose two fights in a row, speaking from experience here. So we'll see if he loses two fights in a row instead of losing one. How much of your camp is based on uh, training for a specific opponent, and how much of it is just like being the best Kevin? Like, Are you strategizing a lot for the style of matchup that you have, or are you just you just know how good you are that you don't need to worry too much about that? My coaches strategize, so in the morning time, we work on the strategies that they strategize on like nine times out of ten. That's pretty much what we've been working on lately. But for the most part, I then shake back and go at nighttime and just work on being the best Kevin I can be at all times. What's the most fun thing in the world for you outside of fighting? Uh... Shit, you, man. you gotta date yourself if you're not allowed to train you're not allowed to fight what, what do you what are you choosing to do shopping shopping yeah shopping. for shoes or just whatever just shopping just spend some of the money you've been working hard to make do you do, do your own grocery shopping and stuff like that do you enjoy like going aisle by aisle and no i mean if the line's not long i enjoy it but overall i just enjoy shopping there was one time i was in the store and i just started handing everybody like hey can i give you 20 bucks to cut yeah can i give you 50 bucks to cut yeah can i give you 100 bucks to cut it's like yeah and I just start cutting everybody. I hate standing in line. But overall, I just enjoy shopping. Do you also hate traffic? I mean, I know you're based in – it's Houston, right? Or, or you're uh, in Dallas. DFW. Dallas yeah, Both mean, of them are terrible traffic cities regardless. Yeah, you get you get pretty good traffic. Uh, but I'm from California, so I'm used to the traffic. But uh, it's like uh, I got a big-ass truck, bro. I just – you know, it's like we got good roads. I drive off the side of the road, get on the surface road, take off, and drive back on, get back on, the traffic's gone. Big trucks work. When I'm in the old school, I can't do that shit. When I'm in the big <laughs> truck, it's good to go. But that doesn't bother you as much as lineups, being in traffic because you're more accustomed to it? Yeah, I can't really pay people in traffic to get out of my way, but in line, I can pay people. So I'm going to do what I got to do. What's the longest you've lined up for a pair of shoes? Have you ever like, gone to like a launch or anything like that where there's a pair that you I know you like, have a shoe head. Me wait for shoes? Headed. Yeah. No, I'm not waiting for, <laughs> I'm not waiting for shoes. <laughs> so, somebody's going to call me and be like, Kev, I got these for 400 If you don't want to wait in line, it'll be 500 See, I paid $100 to cut mm -hmm. line. I'm not waiting in line. So you're, you're a secondary market guy when it comes to shoes? I hate waiting in line. I'm, I'm a secondary market on anything when it comes to waiting in line. I'm not waiting in line. So there you go, guys. If you guys want to sell Kevin something and there's a line for it, you can sucker me into an extra $100 off the rip. But don't sucker me too much because the next guy will come and do it for 99 that's Fuckers. why this man likes to fight so often, so that he can cut the line as often as possible and not have to wait. There's no line. You know exactly <laughs> what you're fighting. Kevin, always love speaking with you. Best of luck on Saturday. Pleasure. Cheers.